Not all planes were originally designed for the role they played. Sometimes they were designed for a totally different role and were only pressed in a different role because of the one thing that spurs on military improvements, war. Thus here is in a nutshell the story of the A-37 Dragonfly, from trainer to predator. In 1952, the United States Air Force issued a request for the trainer experimental program, which called for a lightweight twin-seat basic trainer. This trainer would introduce Air Force cadets to jet aircraft. The aircraft submitted by Cessna was received favorably due to the side-by-side -side seating configuration, which allowed the instructor to interact more easily with the student. By September 1955, the first aircraft were delivered to the Air Force under the designation T-37 Tweet. If you like these videos, you could help the channel either by subscribing or hitting the like button. Ideas for other aircraft to feature in a nutshell are welcome in the comments. As the American military involvement in Vietnam kept growing, the military grew more interested in counterinsurgency aircraft. Existing aircraft as the A-1 Sky Raider, although capable in that role, proved harder to handle for the younger pilots who being trained on jets had difficulty adapting to the radial engine and the tail dragger landing gear. Since all pilots had during their training flown with the T-37 Tweet, that aircraft promised to be a good alternative coin aircraft. The T-37 might have been a good basis for a coin aircraft, but it needed some improvements, such as more powerful engines, hard points for ordnance, and guns. Cessna started by doubling the engine power, replacing the twin Continental J-69 engines with twin General Electric turbojet engines. The wings were strengthened to accommodate larger winged fuel tanks and four-store pylons on each wing capable of carrying a wide array of bombs and rockets. In the right side of the nose, a single 7, 62mm minigun was installed with 1,500 rounds. The official designation also changed from T-37 to a 37 Dragonfly to distinguish the new aircraft from its trainer brother. In August 1967, 25 A-37s were deployed to Vietnam under the Combat Dragon Evaluation Program. The aircraft were used successfully in various missions like close air support, helicopter escort, and as forward air controllers. Despite the early success, some deficiencies were revealed. Most noticeably, the A-37A model lacked range and endurance, and the non-redundant flight control system made the aircraft vulnerable. As a result of this evaluation, the USAF signed a contract for an improved version designated as the A-37B. Since the B models were newly built airframes, they were stronger than the A model. The B model introduced redundant flight controls, armored ejection seats, and self-sealing tanks. In Vietnam, the A-37 excelled in close air support. Due to its slower speed in comparison to the fast jet fighters, the A-37 could drop bombs with greater accuracy. Its small size, atypical speed, and low operation altitude made it harder to hit with gunfire. During close air support missions, only one pilot would operate the aircraft. During forward air control missions, where the A-37 was used to spot targets and guide other aircraft, an observer would occupy the second seat. By the end of the conflict, a 37s had flown over 160,000 combat sorties, with only 22 aircraft lost in combat. Besides the United States Air Force, other air forces were equipped with the A-37. As America withdrew from Vietnam, the South Vietnamese Air Force received 254 A-37s. After the fall of Saigon, 92 were recovered, while the 95 remaining aircraft were enlisted with the Vietnam People's Air Force. Several other countries bought or were donated at 37s, among them Colombia, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Peru, and Uruguay. Following the end of the Vietnam War, the A-37s were transferred to Air National Guard and Air Force Reserve units. In the early 1980s, these aircraft were primarily assigned forward air control duties, prompting the new designation OA-37B. By the 1990s, the OA-37Bs were phased out in favor of the A-10 Thunderbolt. 
Because the A-37 never operated in North Vietnamese airspace, the aircraft never attracted much media attention. A trainer-turned-attacker was also less impressive than the bigger F-4 Phantoms cruising the skies above Vietnam. Nevertheless, the A-37 is a remarkable example of repurposing existing aircraft for new and essential roles. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe or hit the like button if you want to support the channel.